If there's anything that you get from this tutorial about syncing audio to video within Premiere Pro, let me just show you that if you have all of your media within one bin, you click and you highlight all of that media, right click, and then go to Create Multi-Camera Source Sequence. I'm gonna be syncing by audio and hit OK. Now, I'm not fast forwarding this at all. It's taking all 50 of those clips. And just like that, with this icon deselected, I can highlight all of these, drag them onto the timeline, boom. I just synced 10 different takes with two different camera angles and all of this audio within the time it took you to watch my intro. Now, obviously there's a bunch of different ways that you could do a scenario like this. Like what if I wanted this to be a multi-cam sequence instead of just these individual clips? What if I just wanted to sync one simple clip? How do I split up a stereo audio clip if I have something like a lob on the left channel and a boom on the right channel? How do I fine tune the placement of the audio clips so they match perfectly? How do I recover an audio clip if I accidentally deleted it from the timeline? How do I get my audio waveforms to look like this instead of like this? I cover all those questions and more in this video where I show you all the tips and tricks that took me years to learn when it comes to the process of syncing audio to video within Premiere Pro. If you are as excited about this as I am, hit that thumbs up button. Let's dive right into it. Tip one, take one is the clap sync. And this accomplishes a couple things. One of them is that I can see a clear, distinct audio waveform of where I clapped and I can match that up with the camera's audio and the audio on my recorder here in my pocket. Let's take this and relate it to Premiere Pro. This process of syncing your take to a smack is known as slating. You hear it on the track. Just say the take number and give it a clap. Now it's easy to match your waveform's attack. Another big tip to avoid syncing pain, hold up the take number on the very first frame. This gives you a visual to help you the most when looking at clips to sync in post. If I pull each clip onto the timeline, synchronize won't work. It's like that by design. Make sure each clip is on a separate track. Highlight, right click, synchronize that smack. Hold option and click, get rid of that scratch. Let's move the clip up and make a new patch. Chop off the ends to finish this sync. Highlight them both, right click and link. The biggest thing that I wanna stress about syncing on the timeline is that you can't sync clips if they're on the same track. If I go here, synchronized is grayed out, it won't work. If I move just the audio and highlight all of these, synchronized will still not work. That's because the video clips are still on the same track. So I'm gonna move this video clip up one and now we get this waterfall effect. I highlight them all and synchronize is now an option. I sync by audio, boom. Just be sure to zoom in and match the visual of the on-camera clap to your good audio. Now, before I show you the details of how to easily sync multiple takes within Premiere Pro, let me just rapid fire tell you or show you five of the most common issues that you'll probably come across when syncing audio to video within Premiere Pro. And obviously, I'm not worth my weight as a filmmaking tutorializing YouTuber unless I were to do this whole section to coffee bean. So let's start with the basic issue. Are you having trouble physically seeing the waveforms? Instead of manually dragging each track to expand its height, what you can do is double click in the negative space right here to expand a single track, hold shift and double click to expand all tracks at the same time, or you can even hold shift and use your scroll wheel up and down to expand or minimize the tracks. Alternatively, you could go over here on the scroll bar to the little circle and click and drag that to expand the tracks as well. To view the audio waveforms in the middle as opposed to from the bottom, go up to this three bar drop down menu next to your sequence name on the timeline and we want to uncheck rectified audio waveforms. If you want your audio waveforms to look bigger, there's two ways that you can do it. We're going to go back up to that same three bar menu, click it and go to logarithmic waveform scaling. This option will allow your waveforms to appear bigger, but this will not affect the volume of the clip. Now, if you do want to actually turn up the volume of the clip, highlight the clip, right click and go to audio gain. Raise the gain by however much you want to, but if you go above the peak amplitude, you will peak. And much like you can fine tune your coffee grind size to pour that perfect shot of espresso, Premiere Pro allows us to fine tune the placement of our audio waveforms so we can achieve that perfect in sync audio visual. As you can hear, the claps are all over the place. Now I can move these clips closer to each other, but you can still see that there's a little bit of offset between the waveforms. So my goal is to get these two green waveforms matched to my camera audio. In order to do that, we need to change the unit of measurement on our timeline from frames per second to audio time units. So over here, next to your sequence name on the timeline with this three bar menu, we're going to go to show audio time units. And when you click this, you should notice a change 
change in the units of measurements right here on the timeline. Now I can zoom in even more. Look at how fine tuned you can get this. So I'm gonna zoom out and go right to the clap right here and move my waveforms over and there you have it. And what I like to do just so I don't mess things up is switch it out of show audio time units and go back to the start of my audio clip. Do add edit, delete, and do add edit, delete. Now we get this, perfectly synced. Just like an espresso machine, perfectly calibrated to give you the right size and amount of coffee grounds for your espresso poles. But wait, what if your espresso machine accidentally got out of sync? and gave you too little or too much coffee grounds. Your coffee wouldn't taste as good, would it? Oof. Well, it's kind of like if you were to accidentally get your video and audio off sync on the timeline. It won't look or sound correct, will it? So, how exactly do you go about getting it back onto sync? Well, here is where I want to give you a little tip about match frame. And move into sync and slip into sync, but most importantly, match frame. So here we have that same situation where the camera audio is on the top and the good audio from my recorder is down here on the bottom. If I were to move this accidentally out of sync, since this camera audio is already linked to the same video clip, it's going to tell me exactly how many seconds and frames it's out of sync. In order to move it back into sync, all you would need to do is right click and click move into sync. That will move the audio clip over. The other option is slip into sync. That will keep this clip in the same place, except it's going to slip the audio over over so it still matches the video clip above. If I click it, you can see that the audio has changed, but like I said, it slipped that audio over. And if I extend this clip over, you can see that the audio is now in sync with the top video clip. That's move and slip into sync, but that only works if the original audio clip was linked to my video file. So let's say in this example, I've already gotten rid of the audio that was paired with the video clip. If I were to highlight all of these, right click and hit link, now these files are linked together like normal, but because these audio files were not originally linked to this video file. If I accidentally just grab these and move them out of sync, we don't get any warnings or indicators that we've moved our files out of sync. That's actually what's probably gonna happen in real life. <laughs> That's actually what's probably gonna happen in real life. My lips don't match up. So in order to get this back onto sync, we could reference that clap again from the on-camera audio. So I'm gonna move this down. If I double click my video clip that puts it into the source monitor, there's two things I wanna point out. If you make any adjustments to this clip, it's gonna show up on the timeline, which is something that we do not want. And the second thing is, is I no longer have access to the audio. I can't click and drag the audio onto my timeline. What we actually wanna do here is use match frame. So I'm gonna highlight this, go up to sequence and click match frame, or even faster, I'm just going to hit F on the keyboard. Now your source monitor is treating this the same as if I were to go and find this clip inside my project bin and double click it. So there's two things I wanna point out. One, the audio is still there. And two, any adjustments I make are not affecting the clip on the timeline. If I click and drag the audio only onto the timeline and line it up, now we have the perfect reference to realign our audio thus making it easier if you somehow accidentally bumped your audio after the fact, you can always go back and line it up pretty quickly. Relating this all the way back to our coffee analogy, with everything all nice and neat and in sync, we're prepared to pull that perfect cup of espresso, right? Wrong. What if you went to put your cup underneath the espresso machine and you just didn't have a cup? What would you do then? Well, it's kind of like when you try and pull your video and audio clip onto the timeline and your audio doesn't even show up. A common thing that I'll see people comment about is that Premiere is broken and why isn't my audio there? Well, that's because this little A1 to the left of the lock isn't highlighted. It's source patching for inserts and overrides. So if I click this and I bring my clip in now, both show up. This also works with your video tracks for those that are interested. So if I bring this in now, because that V1 isn't highlighted, the video isn't there. But if I highlight it again, now I bring it in. It's kind of confusing. I know I made a whole video about this particular section of Premiere Pro. If you want to check it out, I'll link it right here. Now, everyone knows that a good pairing to espresso is steamed milk. Kind of like a good pairing for audio during an interview is a lav mic and a boom mic. But what if that pairing was recorded into a single stereo track? One on the left channel and the other on the right. How could you split that up and treat them as separate clips on the timeline? 
So right here we have a stereo track. And what I was doing was recording the boom microphone to one side and the Shure SM7B to another side. So let me show you how you can split this track up so you can treat the microphones as their own clips. There's a couple ways to do it. If you're on the timeline, I could duplicate this by holding Option or Alt on Windows and moving it. And then I could right click and go to Audio Channels. Right here, we're modifying the clip. And on my left channel is where my Shure SM7B is. And what you're telling it is, hey, on the clip on the left channel, I want it to look at the SM7B or the left channel. And on the right channel, I want it to look at the left channel's audio as well. So now both the left and the right on the clip are going to look at my Shure SM7B. I hit OK and look at that. It's represented right here on the waveform. Now, if I go over here to my duplicate, I want to do that same process, go to audio channels. And now instead of doing both left. Now I want the media source to go to the right. So now both channels are going to be looking at whatever was recorded on the right side of the stereo file. Now I have my Shure SM7B on top and my boom microphone on the bottom. That's one way to do this process, but I don't think it's the best way because again, you're going to have to be manually doing that with each clip and it'd just be best if you modified all of your audio clips in the beginning. And then when you brought them onto the timeline, they were all just how you wanted them to look to start with. Let me show you what I mean. So instead of bringing in the clip like this, now I'm going to highlight all of my takes. So take one through take 10. I'm going to right click, go to modify, audio channels. Here we get that same screen, but now I want you to pay attention up here. The preset says use file, but because I know I want these to be mono files, I can split them up. Now I'm going to go to mono, and we also want the clip channel format to be mono. We do not want it to be stereo because then it would just turn out how it used to. Now it's going to split this up and you can see it. Clip one, channel one is going to be a mono file of whatever was on the left channel. Clip two is going to be whatever was recorded on the right channel. I hit okay. If I click and drag all 10 of these takes, isn't that beautiful? Now we have them split up into two mono tracks that are still linked, which is nice, as opposed to a stereo track. You have all your settings right on the machine. You pulled that perfect shot of espresso. You have your steamed milk all ready to go for that final pour to put everything together. And it's just like at this point, we can now take all those tips and tricks and information that I explained in the previous parts of this video and relate it to creating multicam sequences on the timeline quickly. But before I do, I just wanna thank you for making it this far into the video. It takes me a lot of effort to make videos like this and keep them educational and entertaining at the same time. So if you made it this far, just, Thank you, thank you for watching. All right, let me show you. So just to showcase that all the information I did tell you is useful, right here in the bin, I'm holding up the number of what take it is, and I can clearly see what that number is on the timeline, and also my takes are numbered. Now remember that we just went through and modified all of these audio clips. So when I bring these onto the timeline, they're going to be mono, even though they were recorded as stereo. So there's two things right off the bat that's helped us from the information that I've already told you. Now I'm gonna highlight all these clips and just to make this easier, I'm gonna make it list view, right click. We're gonna go through the process that I showed you at the beginning of the video and do create multicam source sequence. I hit OK, and I want to make sure that I sync by audio, and you can choose the different settings right here however you want to, but these are the ones that I prefer, and especially I like to move my processed clips into a bin of their own. From here, I'm going to hit OK, and just like in the beginning of the video, it's now processing all of those clips. Boom, I have my 10 takes. Now what I did at the beginning of the video was not have insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips highlighted. And what that does is take all of these sequences and it drops them onto the timeline without them being nested or multicam sequences. As you can see right here, when I drop it onto the timeline, everything is synced, but it's just not in a multicam sequence. But if you wanted to just bring in multicam sequences right off the bat, what we can do is turn insert and overwrite sequences as nests or individual clips on. And now, I'll highlight all of my multicam sequences and bring them onto the timeline and boom, there is our beautiful 
multi-cam sequence on the timeline. And there's a couple things that I wanna point out. Notice how it only brought in the good audio. So right here is the Shure SM7B. This bottom clip is the boom microphone right here. This won't be a full blown tutorial on how to do multi-camera editing. I'll just show you that if you want to switch between cameras, there's two ways that you can do it. The first way is you can create a cut on the video channel. So I'm gonna hit Command K right there to add an edit. And then I'll double click on the multi-camera and just switch it right here in the source monitor. That's if you manually wanna switch your cameras, but you can also switch your cameras in real time during playback. In order to do that, you'll wanna to go to your program monitor and in the plus sign, you wanna to go to toggle multi-camera view on and off. Right, and I'm gonna bring that onto the program monitor, click it. And now we have a similar view to what we were looking at with our source monitor. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of this so you can really see what's going on. And it's pretty easy just to hit play and on my number keyboard, I can toggle between one and two. One and two, one, two, one, two, one, two. There we go. Pretty easy and your edits are right there on the timeline. Hopefully this video had the information that you needed when it comes to syncing audio to video inside Premiere Pro. There are a couple other methods to syncing audio in Premiere that I didn't discuss in this video. The main one being timecode. If you are familiar with timecode, I made a complete tutorial about that subject specifically. If you wanna check it out, I'll link it right here. And until next time, I hope you are out there living a life of abundance. Bye. Rolling, speeding, slate, wind. Wind, people. Yeah. 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 I can't do a cartwheel. Yeah. Tip one, take one, is the clap sync.